Therefore, it's time for members' <laughs> statements. The member from Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you again, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I'm pleased to stand today in uh, the Legislature uh, before World Haemophilia Day, which will be celebrated on April 17th this year. Haemophilia is a genetic bleeding disorder which impairs the body's ability to properly clot. Unfortunately, one in a thousand people have a bleeding disorder like haemophilia, but many go undiagnosed and never receive the treatment they require. It's estimated that 75% of those suffering from haemophilia around the world are still receiving inadequate access or no access at all to proper treatment. And there is no cure to haemophilia, although it can be controlled through regular treatments, such as infusions of the clotting factors, uh, which is a lifelong process and highly costly. The World Federation of Haemophilia is a not-for-profit organization and has been a tireless advocate for over 50 years for bleeding disorders. The training and education they provide to people regarding proper diagnosis and management for those who suffer from haemophilia is crucial in the fight against this delicate disease. I just want to take a moment and just recognize John Plater. Uh, John Plater uh, was a friend of mine in university. I used to go to the movies with him Tuesday nights. He passed away uh, four years ago. He had haemophilia and he was affected with the tainted blood scandal this uh, country went under. But he played a key role in ensuring that those were looked after. He was a strong fighter for human rights. And I don't think we could celebrate World Haemophilia Day without mentioning uh, heroes like John Plater in this legislature. Sure. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. For the member state, Mr. Member from Hamilton East, Stony Creek. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I was joined in the media studio this morning by anti poverty advocates from Hamilton and Toronto. They discussed the gross inadequacy of social assistance rates in Ontario, the effects of this deep poverty trap on children, families, and single people, and the path forward proposed in my Bill 185 that would tie social assistance rates to the actual cost of living in different Ontario municipalities. Ontario's desperately low social assistance rates have left families hungry, underhoused, and sick. It's heartbreaking, Speaker, to hear the real effects of our inadequate safety net on the lives of real Ontarians. Over 900,000 people in the province rely on Ontario Works or ODSP, but more than half of these families do not even have enough to eat. The continuing existence of deep poverty in this province is a scandal. We see dire poverty and all its terrible effects in many First Nations and remote northern communities as we're going through right now. We see it in our greatest cities, and we see it throughout rural Ontario. Social policy making should be based on evidence and research. My Bill 185 will provide the government and the public with hard evidence and research on the cost of living in different Ontario communities each year and recommend benefit rates that meet people's basic needs. The bill is a real change, Speaker, a step forward ending dire poverty in Ontario. I hope that all members will support it. And, Speaker, I must say I was a little disappointed this morning to hear some of the comments from the minister in reference to uh, the uh, uh, activity of the NDP in these matters. I can remember the days of, uh, of uh, grandmothers when that party cut off grandmothers from support. Thank you. Members' statements. The member from Mississauga, Arendelle. Uh, Mr. Speaker, April 13th is a great day. is a great is a day of great significance for Sikhs, as on this occasion Guru Gobind Singh, the tenth Guru of the Sikhs, laid down the foundation of Khalsa, the Order of the Pure Ones. On this day in 1699, Guru Gobind Singh has summoned Sikhs from all over India to the city of Anandpur Sahib. At this gathering, the Guru called upon Sikhs to uphold their faith and preserve the Sikh religion. In this ceremony, Guru Gobind Singh made five Sikhs the Panj Pyara, or the five beloved ones. It was following this ceremony that Guru Gobind Singh created the Order of Order the Khalsa, the Order of the Khalsa, or Soldier Saints. In a move to end social subdivision, Guru Gobind Singh Ji asked the Panj Pyara to drop their surnames that link them to caste or occupation and give them new names. The women were called Kaur, meaning princess, to emphasize dignity, and men were called Singh, which means line to remind her, a reminder of the need for courage. The Guru created five articles of faith, which all Khalsas were required to wear and all beginning with the letter K, each of these articles of faith is rooted in Sikh philosophy. The turban is also a central tenant of Sikh faith. The turban represents the Sikh commitment to service to others and uphold equal rights for all with accountability only to God. 
Bisaki is also a Punjabi harvest festival. This day is also observed as a Thanksgiving day by farmers to pay their tribute, thanking God for the abundant harvest and also praying for future prosperity. Mr. Speaker, over 600,000 Sikhs live in Canada. The festival of Bisaki has a tremendous religious significance for over 350,000 Sikhs who reside in Ontario. Every year, Ontario Sikhs take great pride in decorating Gurdwaras and organizing Nagar Kirtans. So this year, the Nagar Kirtan will be held in Toronto on the April 24th and in Mississauga on May the Thank 1st. You. So I want to extend the invitation to all my colleagues to attend that function. Thank you very much. So the member statements, the member from Nipissing. Speaker, communities in my riding are expressing concern about volatility and sudden price changes in gasoline experienced at times in northern Ontario. The City of North Bay and the municipality of Powassan both recently passed resolutions regarding this concern. They note that five provinces, PEI, Nova Scotia, Newfoundland and Labrador, New Brunswick and Quebec, now utilize a form of gas price regulation with a system that sets a maximum price and a scheduled change where customers know uh, what they're paying week to week with uh, province-wide price ranges in place. The City of North Bay also points out that drivers in, North, in Northern Ontario often see wide ranges in gasoline prices compared to other areas, particularly in Southern Ontario. As a result, North Bay and Powassan Councils both resolved to, quote, request the provincial government investigate benefits of such regulation for Ontario. Speaker, the fact these resolutions come at a time that gas prices are much lower than they have been in recent past, I believe reinforces the level of concern being expressed here, and the government should take that concern seriously. And I thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. The member Savis, the member from London West. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I rise today to congratulate Ahmed Masui and the Canadian Federation of Students on their Change.org petition, which has generated signatures from 60,000 Ontario students in less than one month. The campaign was organized in response to the changes to student aid announced in this year's budget, which will reduce tuition fees for many low-income students beginning in 2017, but will do nothing to address the crushing debt burden carried by current students and recent graduates. Graduates. Speaker, for more than a decade, Ontario students have been paying higher tuition fees than any other province. With students forced to rely on loans to finance their education, many are graduating with debt loads of $27,000 or more. At the same time, interest on student loans charged by the Ontario government means that many graduates pay as much in interest as to pay down their principal. In a labour market that offers little or no job security or unpaid internships that earn nothing at all. The prospect of years of debt prevents these graduates from even thinking about the normal milestones of adult life, like buying a house or a car, getting married, or starting a family. Speaker, interest on student loans is effectively a poor tax. It disadvantaged those from the lowest income families who carry the largest loans. I urge this government to listen to the 60,000 students who have signed the petition and provide uh, debt relief and eliminate interest repayment from student loans. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Beaches East York. Well, thank you, Speaker. And today it's my pleasure to rise in the House and congratulate East York Skating Club on the 65th anniversary of their ice show. And the theme of this year's program, a musical tribute, decades of music, celebrating music from the 50s to today. And since 1949, the East York Skating Club has been an important part of the Beaches East York community. Thousands of skaters have trained and started their careers here, including many who have gone on to compete at national and international levels. Kimberly Athern, who is my legislative assistant, is but one of their many talented athletes and speaker. She can still execute a double sow cow. Wow. <laughs> a big part of the ice show's success and popularity is that it allows all skaters who regularly participate in the club's year-round program to perform. The East York Skating Club is a not-for-profit and renowned for its community involvement. A large group of coaches, parents and volunteers spend countless hours ensuring that the performance numbers are polished, the costumes are resplendent and that every small detail is managed. And the show is a true community effort. It's the highlight of the season and not just for the skaters but for the families and friends that support them and hundreds of skating fans that come out to see the show. 
The 65th annual ice show takes place next weekend at the East York Memorial Arena, with three shows scheduled for Friday and Saturday. An ice speaker person will be attending the opening night, and my family and I are looking forward to celebrating these skaters, their performances, and thanking all the coaches, the volunteers that make this event so very, very special. Very nice. I, I can still do one, too. Any member statements? The member from Dufferin Caledon. Thank you, Speaker. I'm pleased to rise today to highlight the work taking place at Booth's Child and Youth Advocacy Centre in Toronto. The Child and Youth Advocacy Centre is a partnership between eight local community and government agencies, including the Ch Children's Aid Society of Toronto, Catholic Children's Aid Society, Native Child and Family Services, Jewish Child and Family Services, Toronto Police Services, Radius Child and Youth Services, Child Development Institute, and the Hospital for Sick Children. This effort brings together all professionals involved in child abuse cases under one roof for a coordinated, seamless, multidisciplinary approach to protecting children across Ontario. Sorry, Toronto. Boost became the first ever child and youth advocacy centre in all of Toronto in 2013. Since then, they have become the largest centre of its kind in all of Canada. In 2014-15, Boost's Child and Youth Advocacy Centre conducted 800 investigations and served 325 children and youth, as well as 259 parents and caregivers. This is a model that w works and has proven to help pr our province's children and youth. I urge this government to allow other communities across the province to replicate this successful model. I want to thank Boost for the great work they are doing in helping the lives of our province's children and youth. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Ottawa South. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, last Saturday I had the pleasure of joining Premier Kathleen Wynne and my colleague from Mississauga, Brampton South, Amrit Manget, at the World Lebanese Cultural Union World Congress Gala. In my riding of, uh, of Ottawa South, Mr. Speaker, I'm fortunate, fortunate to represent many families of Lebanese descent. And on Saturday night, I was pleased to see so many familiar faces from Ottawa at the gala. The World, Culture, the World Lebanese Cultural Union is a non-political, non-religious organization dedicated to building cultural and economic bridges between Lebanon and the many countries where millions of Lebanese people now call home. Mr. Speaker, the gala brought together people from across the country to, to honor three members of their community for their contribution to the Canadian societies and the Lebanese community. The first was an entrepreneur and honorary consul of Lebanon, Mr. Wadi Fari from Halifax, president of the uh, WM Fari's group, Entre entrepreneur from Quebec, Mr. Jamil Chieb, president of Adonis Marche, and uh, lastly, Mr. Speaker, uh, entrepreneur, Mr. Mohamed Faki, president of Paramount, Paramount Fine Foods right here in, uh, in Ontario, was, uh, cel was celebrated. And uh, Mr. Speaker, it was an honor to be there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Mrs. Uh, uh, Mississauga, Brampton South. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on April 2nd, I attended the 2016 Equity Conference hosted by the Dufferin Peel Catholic School Board at St. Francis Xavier High School in my great riding of Mississauga, Brampton South. Sometimes we forget that for all the diversity in Peel region, there are some very simple inequalities which our society must challenge, such as gender inequality or the stigma that surrounds mental health which affects us all. The keynote speaker at the conference was Margaret Trudeau, who herself experienced society's harsh, even unjust attitude towards mental illness. I want to thank the school board for hosting this wonderful conference, for raising the issue of equity in race, socioeconomics, and personal ability, as well as mental health. Mr. Speaker, it was inspiring to see so many teachers and staff attend this important event. And of course, I want to thank Michelle Coutinho, the principal of the equity, diversity, and inclusive education with board for organizing the event. Congratulations, Michelle, on your highly successful event. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It's now